The parents of a man who died inside the Gwinnett County Jail are demanding $10 million from the county, blaming their son's death on the, quote, negligent and reckless actions of sheriff's deputies. And last fall, the Fox 5 I team first brought you the story of Chris Howard and how jailers ignored a doctor's order to immediately get him to the medical unit after he suffered a seizure. Well, Fox 5 I team reporter Randy Travis returns now with how the tragedy still lingers for those who loved Howard. Randy? That's right, Russ and Dieter. Yeah, for more than a year from the moment they first met until the moment Chris died, he and his girlfriend Laurel Kate never missed a day seeing each other, often along the shores of Lake Lanier. But it's that video of Chris inside the Gwinnett Jail that she says is now burned into her memory forever. The majority of our life was spent on the lake. We spent every second together and we had so much fun together. I wouldn't have rather been with anyone else. She's 5'4", he was 6'6", six, six, an odd couple, only if you're speaking vertically. Love can surprise you from all directions, even when someone is no longer there. It's still not real to me. I feel like maybe Chris is out of town, or I just haven't seen him in a while. I can't wrap my head around the fact that I won't see him again in this life. Chris Howard was no hardened criminal when he arrived at the Gwinnett County Jail in February of last year. He had made two nonviolent mistakes, a DUI on New Year's Day and a positive drug test given by his probation officer after eating a pot lace cookie. He made stupid mistakes. He was a boy. Chris also lived with a genetic disease called MCAD, which can leave someone with dangerously low blood sugar levels if they don't eat regularly. Laurel Kate says Chris was strong and healthy and often ate candy to make up for Miss Meals. So when I talked to him at the jail, I said, Chris, make sure you eat something because you haven't eaten all day. Surveillance video shows him eating a sandwich and drinking juice provided by deputies. But later that evening, just as he finished talking on the phone to Laurel Kate, you can see Chris collapse in a holding cell and begin to suffer seizures. Deputies and nurses quickly arrive. According to an internal affairs report, the doctor on call ordered Chris be taken upstairs to the infirmary, quote, immediately. But instead of rushing Chris to medical, deputies decided to put him in an observation cell instead, even though no one was assigned to observe him. What you're about to see lasted for 30 minutes. Why would someone watch him begging for his life, crawling up the door, crawling up the side of the cell? How could someone watch that happen and not feel like I want to help them? None of the deputies interviewed by internal affairs investigators seemed to think Chris's life was in any danger as they walked by cell 13 that night. I saw the man peer over the, the window ledge there a few times. He appeared, you know, looked kind of tired, looked kind of weak, but nothing that made, nothing that drew any attention. It was ultimately your decision to leave him in 13 without telling the supervisor that's what you were doing. You never talked to anybody. I did not. Chris would arrive at the jail infirmary nearly an hour after the doctor first ordered deputies to take him. He would go into cardiac arrest on the way there and die two days later at Gwinnett Medical. Laurel Kate never left his side. I prayed the entire time that there would be a miracle, but that wasn't the case. An autopsy later ruled Chris died from complications from that genetic disease. At the time of her report, the ME did not know about the delay in getting him to medical, but last year she told the Fox 5i team she doubted it played a role in his death. Do you think his death was preventable? 100%. No deputies were ever disciplined, but Chris's parents placed the blame squarely on them. This notice of claims letter sent to Gwinnett County last month accuses deputies of negligent, reckless, and intentional acts that caused Chris's pain and suffering and untimely death. They demand no less than $10 million. Gwinnett County had no comment. To know that Chris was so helpless and fighting so hard for his life is so sickening. I just have to hope that this will make a difference and change things for other people. Gwinnett County is already dealing with another major lawsuit at the jail. A federal appeals court let move forward a civil rights case involving restraint chairs allegedly used on people who 
pose no threat to themselves or the jail. So county lawyers have a lot on their plate right now. You know, it only seems to make sense that that hour would have made a difference. Is, is, is the jail changing the way it's doing anything? No, but they are reinforcing their policy, they told me, that when the doctor says get an inmate or a prisoner to medical, you take them immediately. Right. You don't ask questions, you don't stick them somewhere else and, and wait to see if anything might get better. Right. or worse, you take them to medical immediately. And yeah, the family thinks that that 50 minute delay would have made a difference in, in Chris's life because he'd have had the cardiac arrest perhaps with medical people around him, right. or maybe even better, already at the Gwinnett Medical Center where you have skilled people there as well. It was terribly sad. Yeah, very Heart much just goes so. out to his girlfriend. Randy, thanks. Okay.